Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to part 7 in Make a Game, a cool series on making a video game in Unity. So basically you should be seeing two things on your screen right now. First of which is my Twitter username, that's Brackies Tweet. Please go ahead and tweet to me if you make something cool using these tutorials. So if you've used them in any way, please tweet pictures or a download link and there's a chance you might be featured in the next video. So I'll start featuring projects and you'll also, you're also seeing a preview of what we're going to be making, which is pickups or collectible items. In this case, we're going to be making a coin. So we're going to do a little bit of scripting and a bit of visual stuff also. So it's half half. Cool. So let's just get started. As always, I've opened up Unity and uh, first off, let's create the pickups. Uh, the visual side of it. So let's go to game object, create other, and select sphere. And uh, we should see it appearing here, but let's just center it in our project so we know where it is. So zero, zero, zero. In the transform, then move it up here and move it to the side just so we have a good look of what's going on. Also, if, if you don't see any shadows or lighting, uh, go up and click the sun here in the um, top of the scene view uh, to get the lighting turned on. Um, because what we're going to be do doing is we're going to be making this look really shiny. And that means it will not be affected. Uh, 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 that means that if our light is not that powerful, it should still be shining somewhat. So we're going to be using lights. Let's rename this ball to coin and uh, let's first off change the shape of it just a bit. So let's uh, scale it down on the X axis to something like 0 0.3. I'll just make it 0 0.3 exactly so you can follow along and we can all, uh, already start seeing it looking more like a coin. And uh, what we'll do now is we will delete the sphere collider. So right click on this and hit remove component. And basically what will happen now if we hit this is we go right through it. Uh, and that's not really something we want. We want it to disappear as soon as we hit it. So we're going to add a new co collider. We're going to press add component, physics, and then box collider. And you might be thinking, well, this is not a box. But uh, the type of collision we're going to be doing here is simply checking whether or not our ball has collected the coin. And that does not require any more complicated of a shape than a box. Um, simply because we can't roll in the Z direction. And well, yeah, there's not much of a difference between the shape of the coin and the shape of the box. Uh, but yeah, it should have adjusted the box for us so it fits, else you can go ahead and adjust the center and the size properties. One thing we have to remember to do, and this is a crucial step, is to check the is trigger. Because if we just go ahead and play now, we will collide with it. And that's not something we want. We just want to be able to check whether or not our ball has entered the coin. And that is done by checking the is trigger. So now that we have the is trigger enabled, um, we can start creating a script. But before we do so, let's just make this look a little more awesome. So go down to the project pane, right click, hit create, and then material. So we're going to be making a new material. And remember in one of the last videos, I explained what a material are, what a texture are. And a material is what contains stuff like textures and shaders. So it's... um. Uh, uh, you normally have just one material for each object, but you can have more. Uh, this one is just going to have a single one. And we're going to call this, let's say glow. Glowing. And it won't actually be glowing, but we'll make it look like it. We're going to fake the effect a little bit. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is simply just change the milling color to something a little more dark. I always do this because when I then drag it onto the coin, we can see it changing like this. Okay, but this is not what we want. So basically select the material in the project pane. You can also select it under the coin, but then you're going to have all this stuff in the way. So I don't recommend that. Just select it in the project pane. 
And what we're going to be doing first is changing the shader because no matter how bright we make this or red or yellow or whatever, it doesn't really look that glowing and interesting because this side is really dark. And uh, what we're going to do to change this is we're going to change the shader. We could change it to something like a specula so we can add a little bit of glow on this side here. Um, and that helps definitely, but this side is still way too dark in my opinion. So what we're going to do is we're instead going to do go down to self-illuminated and then select diffuse. Self-illuminated means that this um, object, even though it's in the shade, will still have light because it's illuminating itself. And uh, you can also have this uh, emit light onto other objects. But you will have to bake that, meaning uh, that we have to go through this whole process of making sure this object doesn't move and then making a texture out of it and overlaying with ob objects and such. It's not something we want to do for this game for sure because it's so simple. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to add a light to it in a moment. Uh, but basically that means that we can leave the illumination map off and we can leave the emission uh, light map as is. And uh, you can add a texture if you want some texture in there. I don't think it's needed. Uh, basically, we can just adjust the uh, color of this until we get it look just right. I want it to be really yellow, uh, like this, and maybe a little more orange, like that. So we get a little bit of a shaded effect, so this side is darker, but it's not much. And now I think it actually looks pretty fine. But as we can see, it's not shining onto other objects. So to achieve that, this, let's add a light and center it on the coin. To do this, go to Game Object, Create Other, and then Point Light. Let's rename this to Coin Light. Drag it onto the coin. And then center the position variables. And now you might be thinking, why does this center on the coin and not the center of the scene when its transform is 0, 0, 0? And that's because Whenever we drag an object onto another one, we do what is called parenting it. So if we take a closer look at what I did to parent it, up in the hierarchy, I selected the coin light and I dragged it onto the coin. See that right now the position variables are 2.6 times 1.2. This is because it's 2.6 in the X and 1.2 in the Y. So if we go ahead and center this now, it will be in the center of the scene. Though if we go ahead and drag this under the coin, it will be zero, zero. And that's because it's now oriented through the coin. So if it's zero, zero, it will be in the center of the coin. That's something uh, that confuses a lot of people, but it's worth uh, noticing. Cool, now that we have this in the center of the coin, let's just play a little bit around with its light properties. I think it's emitting a pretty beautiful amount of light. Uh, it might be just a bit too much, uh, but we're definitely going to change the color just a bit. And whenever you're changing the color of light, watch out, it doesn't get too much. I think this is too much. Uh, we'll make it a little more whitish. So about half, of, uh, half the way between white and completely saturated. And then, yeah, the orange color. And we can just bump down the intensity just a bit to something like 0 0.7. Let's try that, 0 0.7. And I think this looks pretty awesome. And now when we play the game, we can see the light affecting our ball and its surroundings. Cool. Uh, what we can also do is add an animation to this coin. But I think we're going to do that in a later video since I want to take good time explaining the animated window. Uh, we're also going to have a cool particle effect uh, whenever the ball picks up the coin. But in, that is again for another video. Uh, so in this one we are just going to make it disappear. Cool, now let's finally create the script. So select the coin, not the coin light. Hit add component, new script. And let's call this coin. Actually, let's do coin pickup. There. Hit create and add. Double click it to open it up in Mono Develop. And we're just going to wait for it to open up.
There we go. Well, basically now we have to use a function that will trigger whenever our ball enters uh, our trigger collider. So to do this, Unity has made a function for us which functions perfectly. We're, this is called on trigger enter. So instead of update, we can just get rid of the function start. Instead of update, we're going to type on trigger enter. This will be called whenever something enters the trigger on our ball or our coin. So basically what we want to do now is we want to check what has entered because if our coin is colliding with the ground, this could just be called all the time. So instead we want to check if it is actually our ball collecting the coin. To do this, we have to tell Unity that we want our information out of this collision. And we do that by first off naming our information. I'll just call it info. This is done in the parentheses. Uh, then we want to specify a type of information and that's going to be of type collider. This is just something you have to remember. It's not something that uh, I expect you to understand right away since it's a little weird this information gathering and such. Uh, but basically what we're doing is we're saying if something enters, tell, uh, tell us more about uh, what has entered and call this information info. Then we want to check if info.name is actually equal to our ball. So if info.name is equal to, and then what did we, we just called it ball. So if info.name is equal to ball. And then we can go ahead and open up some bracket keys. And let's just go ahead and check if this code works. And we can do this by using a debug.log. And then open up parentheses and say uh, coin picked up. You can type whatever you want here. But basically debug.logs are used to check if code is working. So if we go under the console window down here and now play the game, we should see coin picked up whenever we picked up, pick up this coin. So if we roll in here, you can see it says coin picked up. That's just what we want. But right now we are checking for a name. We could also be even more con convenient and check for a tag. If our, let's say our game has multiple players who should all be able to pick up this coin, it's better to use tag. So we'll use info.tag and then it needs to be able to uh, check for player. Save this and head into Unity. This is not going to work right away. We can just check this by clearing the error here or pressing clear and play and then playing. So if we play once more here, nothing happens when we enter the coin. That's because we actually have to tag our ball. You do this by selecting it and going to the inspector where it says tag. Here we can just select a player. If you want another tag, hit add tag and add it to the list. Then go under the ball and assign it. I'm just going to go with player since the ball is actually our player. Now we can see that this is all looking right and we have tagged our player. So let's select the console window and have a go at it and see if it works. It does. Great. So now we don't really just want the console to say coin picked up. We want something to actually happen. First off, we want the game object uh, to be destroyed. So destroy. And then in the parentheses here, type game object with a small g. That's important. So uh, whenever we do this, destroy the destroy function is obviously used to destroy things. But game object, when we just type it like this, means that it's the uh, object the script is sitting on that will be destroyed. So that means our coin. If we go ahead and test this, oops, try again. Hit play and uh, roll into our coin. Hmm. Okay, I'm back. Uh, Unity was having some problems, but uh, it's gone now. I restarted it. So let's hit play. 
and uh, now we can simply roll into our coin and the coin disappears and also the coin lights because it's the, it's parented to the coin so that dip disappears with it great uh, but uh, that, that's basically it for the simple part of the script we could also add a counter that gets bigger and bigger whenever we pick up a coin so we can keep track of how many coins we have picked up we'll go ahead and do this in a later video in a separate script uh, but basically to remember uh, um, to make us remember that we need to do this right before we destroy the game object let's put in a debug.log saying that uh, we should add some functionality here let's just say add coin counter here this is great if you're multiple people working on a project or just for remembering things you need to add so now when we hit play the coin disappears and it says add coin counter here that's basically it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed it and i really look forward to seeing what you have made using the tutorials again the um, if, if you want to tweet to me, do it at Bracky's Tweet. Again, Bracky's Tweet. Thank you for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.